Welcome back for another episode one review and continuing my little journey down nostalgia way with uh, productions and cartoons from my childhood that I finally remember, even though they might not have been the most popular of cartoons, we go with Extreme Dinosaurs. Ever since the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out, um, a lot of companies have been trying to find the next version of that. We had the uh, the Cowboys of Mesa, the Biker Mice from Mars, the SWAT Cats are kind of in that same vein, um, and probably the most successful version of that is the Street Sharks. And I might as well tell you guys, next week we're going to be reviewing the first two epi- the first uh, couple episodes of Street Sharks, as I believe the um, plot for the um, for, for the first couple episodes, it, it ties all together. So we're going to be doing a uh, about two or three episodes and just giving a, a big review on the beginning arc of Street Sharks. But another one that I found that was pretty successful was Extreme Dinosaurs. Extreme Dinosaurs was a spinoff of uh, Street Sharks. They actually came on and towards the end of Street Sharks run on the TV show as the Dino Avengers. Um, I remember seeing the Dino Avengers episode of Street Sharks after I had already seen Extreme Dinosaurs and it kind of confused me like why they sounded different, why they were called the Dino Avengers. That didn't make any sense to me. But Regardless, um, I remember catching this, uh, another show that was always on WADL TV 38 in Detroit, and I remember really enjoying it. It usually came on um, after I had gotten out of school, usually around that late evening period. Same as Mummies Alive, and just like Mummies Alive, this is also another production from Deke, and this also had a production life of around a few months. Uh, this show ran for 52 episodes from September to December of 1997, and then, of course, went into syndication where that's where uh, I first saw the episode. And of course, there's plenty of toys and merch and everything for it because... As I said, with Mummies Alive, everything was created to be a toy back in the 80s and 90s. Um, And that's not necessarily the case today. Uh, Shows are actually created to try and be good shows. Um, In the 80s and 90s, stuff would end up being, you know, kind of a good show or last a little bit by accident. Um, But the main focus was to sell them toys. Um, It's why Transformers has lasted. It's one of those things that is amazing that Transformers and Ninja Turtles and um, they've they've lasted as long as they have because people eventually have gotten on board with the properties and they've shown care and they've shown that long term commitment to them. But again, main goal for a lot of these was to sell toys and toys is what the extreme dinosaurs were pretty much uh, born and bred for to be a continuation of the street sharks so the pilot episode essentially goes over the main conflicts are four heroic dinosaurs the tyrannosaurus rex t-bone the stegosaurus creatively named stegs the triceratops named spike and the uh, pterodon named bullseye they are four dinosaurs who were taken by this weird scientist when they were still just regular dinosaurs transformed given intelligence and also weapons and apparently a lot of knowledge about stuff that they probably shouldn't have knowledge about but uh, regardless they are transformed and they have morals and they have you know independent streaks so the crazy alien dimensional scientist dude he's just like nah i'm gonna get raptors instead raptors are a little more evil which is just slanderous and you know part of that uh raptor propaganda that was started with jurassic park raptors aren't necessarily evil they're animals just like these things are Um, but the raptors they're evil Um, we have the three evil raptors Bad Rap is the leader of the Raptors. We have uh, Spithor, who's the nerd brains of the operation for the Raptors, and Hax. Um, and we also have a, uh, a sort of lady officer um, who's similar to the galactic space wizard alien dude, extra dimensional dude, by the name of Cedra. Um, she is she's the main ally of the extreme dinosaurs. A long story short, um, using a weapon, the raptors kind of fuck shit up. Their time displaced now. They're in modern times trying to figure things out. And of course, the extreme dinosaurs are there to stop the raptors from doing their thing. Um, if you've seen Ninja Turtles, you know the breakdown. T Bone is the leader. He's Leonardo. Steggs is the brains of the operation. He's Donatello. Spike, he's the tough guy. He's Raphael. And Bullseye is the goofy dude who's kind of lazy. You're Michelangelo of the group. Um, that, that's pretty much the breakdown of a lot of shows that came out in the 80s and 90s. You had 
the leader, the brains, the tough guy, and the goofball. Um, and you, you get that here too. Um, there's a lot of veteran voice acting talent that's spread throughout both the dinosaurs as well as the raptors. Um, a lot of voices that you'll recognize be like, okay, I, I, I remember that voice. One in particular, uh, the voice of Steggs is Sam Vincent, who would go on to voice Double D on Ed and Eddie. Scott McNeil, he's back. He voices T-Bone. Um, and he also voices another secondary character, uh, Gary Chalk. He voices bad rap. He's been in movies. Um, again, one of these are voices that you wouldn't necessarily be able to point out in the crowd because their names aren't, you know, these, we aren't talking about like Billy West or Phil Lamar here, but these are still some recognizable utility players in the voice acting game. And so they all do a relatively good job. It's a deep production. So, you know, the animation isn't the tippy top quality and, you know, the lip flap they don't always match but this show it was just meant to be mindless dumb fun to sell some toys and that's what it is even all these years later um, i'm not going to pretend that this was any uh, deeper meaning of a show that it was any better um i would say it's again it's probably the on that tier list of anthropomorphic animals it's definitely below i would say swat cats as well as street charts but for some mindless fun and for some cool visuals with dinosaurs, you know, riding cars and shooting lasers and rockets and all of that, you can do a lot worse than extreme dinosaurs. So it's on YouTube. The entire series is on YouTube, all 52 episodes. They're free. Go ahead, check them out and uh, see what you think of the show if you didn't catch it when it was on during the 90s and early 2000s. That's going to do it for this review. Um, like I said, next week for my episode review, we are going to be looking at Street Sharks again probably the most famous and the most successful of all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ripoff shows. And of course, we've got our movie reviews coming and our wrestling reviews coming as well. Follow me on all my social medias at Jamel727. And of course, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Treat everybody well, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.